Hi hi, I finally recovered from my post-con depression to make this video because I wanted to show you everything that happened to me this year at TwitchCon in San Diego. I'm really nervous to make a video like this, which is why I delayed uploading it because, well, I'm a VTuber. Which means my vlog experience features me and my roommates walking around the convention center without people knowing who the f I am. Anyways, with that, it's TwitchCon vlog time, baby! Woo! What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> so we didn't exactly drive straight to San Diego. We took kind of like a little bit of a road trip. Like first we had to stop at McDonald's because um, I really had to go to the restroom and everyone, I guess, wanted some kind of like small meal on the way. But look, we got this really cute little croc. Look at all the different ones we could have uh, gotten. I didn't show you. Then about halfway there, we stopped at Eddie's World because it's a really good midway point. And if you have never been to Eddie's World, then you are in for a treat because they have so much candy. And here's the thing. I'm not really a big candy person, but at Eddie's World, what makes it very unique is that the candy just tastes really fresh. And as someone who, again, I despise candy. I actually liked some of the candy that we got at Eddie's World because of how fresh it tastes. And interestingly, they had this jerky that I ended up buying that was really good and spicy. It actually became like a good little snack for me over the weekend. And then as we continued driving, there was this huge ass fire that we saw on our way there. Like it it was actually, it was kind of scary. And after being on the road for six hours and looking at all of these boulders, we finally made it to San Diego and checked into our hotel and then E immediately had to go get our badges because we were kind of cutting it close to when the badge pickup time was gonna close because you know we, we took our time trying to drive there and I was booking it over there because I wanted to get my badge. And here's the thing, like we, <laughs> we were starving since eating the McDonald's and candy isn't exactly filling. So I am I looked like a hot mess. Like I, ha I didn't have any makeup done. My hair was like up in a bun, just all messed up. And I'm like sweaty and hungry. And right after I get my badge, I walk out and someone like stops and like, oh my God, are you Mari? And I'm like, uh, uh, I am way too hungry and tired to try to like pretend like this is not me. And I'm like, uh, yeah, y y y yes. Um, this person wanted me to like sign their poster, but then they didn't have a pen and I was like, wow, I was not expecting to be recognized by anyone uh, at this convention, let alone right after I get my badge at badge pickup. But again, we were starving and since candy isn't exactly filling, we got dinner at a nearby restaurant and oh my goodness, the food portions were huge. I highly recommend if you go to TwitchCon in San Diego next year to share a plate with a friend because the amount of money you're going to spend with how big the food portions are it's worth just sharing it with someone this loser has an allergy oh god that's hurt all right it's the first official day of the con we got breakfast at this place near our hotel and um i didn't realize how organic and healthy all of these places are in san diego i got this matcha latte and it tasted like nothing i thought i was overreacting so i asked if you know one of my roommates if i could try the vanilla coffee and no my matcha literally tastes like nothing and i got vanilla flavoring in it it still tasted like nothing so besides me getting scammed on the matcha um i actually really liked my crunchy chocolate croissant and this yogurt parfait was huge and just really really yummy oh, i'm just gonna keep my cone on me cone comb i'll perpetually just be brushing my bangs okay. just how bad does it look how bad is the frizz it's honestly not bad okay thank god i don't have sex hair <laughs> 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 So none of us are Twitch partners, well, except for one of our roommates, but we were all able to go through the partner line because of him. So that was really clutch. I'm actually impressed by how straightforward security was because I remember last year was a pain to go through security with the backpack, which is why I usually bring a fanny pack for conventions. But one of my roommates was able to get in with her bag without any issues. So that was actually kind of cool. The first thing that I did when I got at the convention center was go to the loot cave to see what they had and get myself some Twitch merch, which surprisingly, I wasn't interested in the majority of the stuff that they had this year, but I did get a couple of pins and as well, you know, a fanny pack because it was actually pretty spacious compared to the one that I had originally brought. And I was trying to fight the urge if I wanted to get that plushie, but 
I really wanted to save my money because I know how expensive everything is at TwitchCon. So I didn't end up getting the plushie and I don't know if I regret it or not, but... <laughs> It was a really cool plushie. Then my roommates all wanted to compete in some shooter game and I'm not really into that stuff. So instead, I acted like the mom that stands in the corner at like amusement parks, taking photos and videos of them with all of our stuff being like, ah, oh, you're doing great, sweetie, good job. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm taking over Mario's phone. I'm probably gonna have the biggest headset dent in my head ever. They did okay. <laughs> Actually, two of my roommates got to go up on stage and play um, the game on like in front of a whole crowd. So that was kind of cool. After that, we walked around the main expo, said hi to my amazing partner managers at Gamersups. Use code Mari for 10% off your entire order, by the way. I actually love my managers so much because they are some of the nicest people I've ever worked with. They're so kind and like I... I just love all the gamer sub merch that we have. They're always coming out with interesting designs and I know one day I will get to my own merchandise with them. So please use my code to help support this channel. Now, I don't know if it was because it was the first day of the convention or if people were still coming in, but it really wasn't that crowded this time at TwitchCon and it was nice to be able to explore the convention center and actually do a bunch of the activities that they had. And they had a lot of interesting booths in interactive activities in Artist Alley this year compared to the last two Twitch cons that I had been to. And nobody got injured in any foam pits or anything crazy like that. Although there were some other stuff that had happened that was kind of sus, but we're not going to talk about that. What I will say is that I was really impressed by how many VTuber related merchandise there was at TwitchCon. Now, there's always been some VTuber stuff here and there, mostly like Hololive or Ninji Sanji, but... I was really surprised to see a lot of more like smaller upcoming indie VTuber merch. I was really surprised by that because here's the thing. It kind of feels like Twitch doesn't show a lot of support for VTubers on their platform. Like it took us forever just to get a VTuber tag to kind of separate us from like other categories and stuff on Twitch. So seeing actual artists and artist alley represent us felt kind of nice. And a lot of these unique merch had I had seen and also bought really inspired me for my own merch ideas that I want to implement later this year. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I actually love doing gotchas in Artist Alley, especially when it's a unique piece of merch like these keycaps that light up and have this just cute artwork on them. The clicking sound helps my tism. And it was literally my saving grace during every social event that I went to at TwitchCon because, well, I need to fidget or else I get very anxious. And yes, Cranach did in fact woof for this final stamp so my other roommate could get this cool Valorant art book. So, so apparently I have to mark for something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so I need to get something off my chest here. Last year when I went to TwitchCon, which was in Las Vegas, I had an incredibly uncomfortable experience of people recording me for their YouTube content. Now, look, I understand that being at TwitchCon means you're going to be recorded, but what happened to me was just, it's gonna shock you because the way that this had all come about was just something that I feel like needs to be talked about. So here's what happened. I had just gotten my badge on like the Thursday, you know, badge pickup day and was heading back to my car. And then someone stopped me while I was on my way out and asked if I could help them with something. Now, I am really familiar with Las Vegas and I know the city can be kind of confusing for first time visitors. And I'm sure if you had seen anything about TwitchCon last year when it was in Las Vegas, a lot of people did complain about getting lost, having to pay expensive Ubers and just having a difficult time navigating the city. So to me, I just thought, okay, this person might need some help with directions or something. That's how they came across to me. But no, they used this as a leeway to shove a camera in my face and ask me questions about racism in Minecraft. It's not like they came up to me and said, hey, can I interview you for this YouTube video I'm making about like Minecraft? No, they literally said like, hey, can you help me with something? Didn't I, I didn't even see the camera. It was just this one guy. He didn't have a microphone on him or anything. Then after I was like, uh, sure, what do you need? Then he whips out the microphone and his friend comes running in with the camera and immediately just started asking me questions about this. And I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, um, they didn't ask for my consent to be interviewed. My badge was showing the entire time and I looked like 
because I don't know about you, but I don't, I'm not there to doll up on badge pickup day. I'm there to get my badge and leave. I never get dressed up on Thursdays. Like I, it's just, yeah, that was just not cool. And I was put in a really socially awkward position with just this entire experience being recorded. Like I have never felt so embarrassed in my life at TwitchCon. And that was the same TwitchCon where I also went to a big Minecraft YouTuber party because my friend Evan invited me to it. And I told a bunch of people, people, you know, that Evan knows and gets along with, I told them all about the mold story and how I've eaten, I've accidentally eaten mold a couple of times, okay? <laughs> like, I've talked about this a few times on this channel about the mold story because um, I have like, I have ADHD. I forget when food goes bad, okay? It's just, it's something I thought was a funny thing. I don't mind being embarrassed like that, you know, if I'm kind of aware with it, like I don't have an issue with it, but I do have an issue with asking for consent to be interviewed especially since I'm a VTuber and I try not to have my face publicly shown as much as possible. So I'm guessing when this person was going around doing these street interviews, they're trying to find like pretty much nobodies because again, who has ever heard of me that's not a VTuber? So they probably saw my badge and was like, yeah, I've never heard of this. B All right, let's just go talk to her. I'm sure she would be like, she's perfect. She looks like a hot mess. Looks like she has a lot of anxiety. She is perfect for this shot because that's, I'm pretty sure that's how I came across. I hope whoever was the person that interviewed me is happy with their content because it was a huge learning lesson for me. And now whenever people ask me for something at a convention, I'm going to immediately ask if I'm going to be recorded. So that way I can make a better informed decision if I want to continue a conversation with them or not, because I wouldn't mind being recorded if they had just asked and just gave me a heads up about this. So yeah, okay, rant done. And look at this awesome sushi roll that I had made. I am, um, well, I mean, it's not sushi, it's maki, but I was actually pretty proud to take this little tiny uh, sushi roll making class, it was really fun. So now let's move on to the fun part because I have a ton of merch to show you. Fun fact about me, I like to spend my first day at TwitchCon buying all of the merch I want to buy. So that way I don't have to constantly carry a bunch of bags around for the rest of the convention. And I'm a huge pin collector. So I was really excited to try to do these little mystery pins, but gosh, everything was so expensive at TwitchCon. So I could only buy just a couple of them. And the crazy thing is I saved up all year for TwitchCon and like I could... I had to spend my money wisely, but I was pretty happy with the pins that I had gotten, as well as the other cool merch that I had gotten. All right, so after buying my merch, I went back to the hotel and got ready for an exclusive VTuber party hosted by Blur. But I didn't take any footage of it because, well, we weren't allowed to for obvious reasons. But I did have a lot of fun and surprised a bunch of VTubers when they realized I was at this party. You know, it actually was a huge learning experience for me too, because it kind of dawned on me how like, um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's this big separation between me and other VTubers because so many VTubers watch my content for like tutorials and advice that like I imagine that me being at this party is the equivalent of like seeing your college math professor or something at a bar and like having your professor like hang out with you and get drinks like I imagine that's how it felt for a lot of people but I was happy to meet Joel and see some of his amazing concept art. I had no idea he is an amazing artist. And not only that, but I had a lot of interesting conversations about ADHD with a bunch of developers. It's, it was such an interesting experience. Like I didn't think any of that stuff would happen, but I'm glad I went to that party because it did happen. So it was really cool to like socialize and not just stay in my hotel room feeling anxious all the time. Like I'm glad I did it. Also, I must have been really drunk every night because there is no way I was actually able able to sleep with how loud my hotel room was. All right, it's day two and we went to the pancake house, which is famous for their pancakes and coffee. So, you know, I had to try what they're all well known for. Unlike my other roommates who clearly don't appreciate how superior big fluffy pancakes are. And yes, these were incredibly soft and chewy. Yum, 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 yum. So I'm sure you're probably noticing we're doing a lot of walking and standing around waiting in the lines at this convention. And well, I know most content creators who make these kinds of vlogs only like to show you the parties, the food and other activities, which I'm also going to show you more of. But I feel like it's important for me to talk about how you can use these conventions to network with people at these booths. I had a pretty in-depth conversation with the devs at Stream Elements because I'm interested in their multi-stream feature that they're implementing and I handed out a ton of business cards and even went as far as to schedule a meeting to talk to some of the other developers at these booths that I had visited. Personally, for me, I like 
conventions and walking around them because when you're trying to grow as a creator and get your name out there, it is really important to be comfortable with talking about yourself to others. Like, do you know how hard it was for me to talk to these people two years ago as a VTuber? Now I can actually show them my worth as a creator because I, well, VTubing has become so much more um, acknowledge. It's still a very niche way to make content, but a lot of these companies are starting to recognize the power of YouTubers. And I spent these last two years working on my brand. So when I approach them with collab ideas that, you know, would benefit both me and them, they actually stopped and listened to me because I, I worked really hard to kind of say like, okay, what is it that I'm about? What is it that I'm going to say to them? And what are my ideas? And this goes for any parties that you go to too, because you don't want to brag about yourself to people per se, but you do want people to kind of be aware of your existence and you want to be memorable to them whenever you introduce yourself. It's really hard to want to talk to people when you have social anxiety, but I remember like the past two years of TwitchCon, I was so nervous to like leave my hotel room and go out and experience things that specifically last year my friend Evan had really pushed for me to go out and socialize and I'm glad that he did because it kind of like helped me get out of my shell to go talk with people and now that I kind of did this is even this year at TwitchCon I realized just how important it is to not isolate yourself and actually like conversate with people. The thing that I suck at the most though is icebreakers. I'm never good at the very first like hi hello kind of thing but once I actually start talking to people then I can carry the conversation it's just I need to figure out a better way to do icebreakers so if you have any suggestions please leave them in the comments down below because it it was really hard for me to like go up and be like hi I'm Mari um I I, I am the VTuber tutorial girl hi hello yeah you know I, I had a hard time with that but overall I did enjoy my TwitchCon I had a lot of fun like experiences with my roommates and I got to hang out with my friends that I haven't seen in a long time and you know that's what I think made TwitchCon a lot of fun this year it's creating memorable moments for yourself and others and just trying all these unique experiences like the Sonic Cafe was freaking amazing and then I also got to meet Cutie Cinderella and try her cookies I also got her to sign my book and now I have a little tiny autograph book where I asked like a bunch of like creators and that I admire to sign and it was just really fun because now I have a like a nice little memory type of thing that I can hold on to. And you want to know what the craziest thing that happened to me at TwitchCon was? No, not that. But the fact that all the restaurants charge you three times the normal price on their menus. And the only reason why I know this is because we stayed an extra day and they literally swapped out the con menu and gave us the normal price menu. I can't believe I paid $8 for a six ounce glass of orange juice when it normally costs $4. Like that's crazy. But I will say this, the sauna cafe and the cat cafe were totally worth the price because that chaos sauce was fire. And spending time petting some kitties was nice because well, I needed some serotonin after realizing how depleted my bank account was after spending $20 per person on this light up cart thingy. And yes, it did cost that much money, and this guy's driving was crazy. But I got to my hotel room fast. It was actually kind of funny listening to him, like, argue and jam out, do, like, a bunch of music the entire way back. You know, I actually don't care about, like, Twitch, per se, or getting a glorified purple badge, because to me, these conventions are a chance for me to see my friends that I made throughout my content creation journey. And I'm glad I got to see my friends and spend time with them creating fun memories because that's what I actually look forward to at every TwitchCon. It's seeing people who I have either never met in real life or, you know, just people who I, I don't get to see that often. And like that, that's kind of how I view a lot of conventions. And it's hard when you are a VTuber because um, unless if you do face reveals, no one really knows what you look like. And then not only that, the social anxiety to socialize, but you do feel so much better talking to people. And like, not every person that I talked to during TwitchCon was on the same wavelength as, as me. Some of them are just kind of like being cordial and you can kind of tell if they're just being nice, but they don't really, you know, with you per se. And then I would have some interesting conversations with people who weren't even VTubers, like they would be VTuber fans and getting, I had like a really interesting conversation about um like uh, some of the big indie VTubers with like a viewer. Like this viewer was a huge, fan and moderator for some of these other VTubers. And it was so interesting to hear their perspective on like the community and the VTubing industry. Like when you open yourself up for opportunities, 
that's when you become lucky and you get to have some amazing conversations with people and you get to have amazing opportunities that, you know, will never come if you don't take that risk to really be vulnerable and put yourself out there. So overall, I did enjoy TwitchCon. Um, at the end, we had a very long drive back home, but on the last day, we did stop at the Doki Doki Literature Club Cafe where that they did and they had this huge collaboration. I had so much fun doing that. And then I went to Little Tokyo and got to get myself this cute little Amelia standee. I was actually really happy to find this. But oh my God, the amount of money I had spent on TwitchCon was insane. I am literally broke. So please use my code Mari to get yourself some gamer subs because um, uh, $8 for a glass of OJ, okay? Okay, no, for real, if you're gonna go to these conventions, please save up money and i spent all year saving up money and i still felt like i didn't have enough so save up money get yourself some um like little bits of granola bars and stuff beforehand and make sure you really plan out what you're gonna be doing for dinner per se and like how you're gonna make sure that you yourself are being kept safe because man oh man if you go unprepared it is whew, it will definitely get you but overall i did have a fun twitch con so I hope you all enjoyed listening to this story. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, everything reminds you of something. Bye!